This is the large vacuum test facility at the University of Michigan, where we test big ion thrusters, like the H9 or the X3. But there's a problem. Our thrusters erode the walls of our test chamber. Our thrusters fire a plasma. This is a stream of atoms with an electron knocked off of them to create a soup of positive ions and electrons. We use an electric field to accelerate the ions to 60,000 miles per hour, generating thrust very efficiently. Unfortunately, to our test facility, these ions look like tiny bullets that knock material off the back wall of our chamber in a process called backsputtering. This material comes back to coat our thruster, making it impossible to measure characteristics like lifetime. To slow this process down, we armor the back wall of our chamber with graphite panels, really big graphite panels, which resist sputtering quite well. But for thrusters at high powers or long lifetimes, even graphite can't keep up. So what do we do? My recent work has involved using force fields to protect our graphite panels, specifically electric fields. The deflector shield is too strong. Not exactly. Imagine a thruster in a test chamber firing a stream of plasma at a graphite plate. If we put a positive charge on this plate, we set up an electric field that slows down the incoming ions. If we slow them down enough, they won't have enough energy to damage the plate. But this electric field also sucks electrons out of the plasma. So as we increase the charge on our plate, the charge on the thruster goes up by the same amount. The result of this voltage coupling is that the ions can't be decelerated by the electric field alone. Deflect those shields at full power. They can't take much more of this. So what do we do next? We add another force field specifically a magnetic field. If we set up a magnetic field perpendicular to the electric field, we can redirect the electrons, making it harder for them to reach the plate. This decouples the thruster voltage from the plate voltage and allows our electric field to slow down the ions. Woohoo! We've just designed a working force field. The deflector shield will be quite operational when your ions arrive. Now how do we build it? First, we find some big graphite plates, like this, and make some giant electromagnets, like this. We put them together in an array so that the plates can create an electric field, and the electromagnets can create a perpendicular magnetic field. Together, these fields comprise our force field, and we've built a real-life force field generator, although we call it a beam catcher to sound more professional. And it looks epic when you turn it on. But how well does it work? To find out, we placed a sensor next to our thruster to look for tiny bits of graphite being sputtered off the beam catcher and we did see evidence of backsputter being reduced. However, our sensor also saw something unexpected. Evidence that the beam catcher was launching ions back at the thruster with enough energy to sputter material off both the thruster and our sensor. So what's happening? This is our theory. Fast ions leaving the thruster are slowed down as they approach the beam catcher. When they finally hit it, they collect an electron and become a neutral particle again. This creates a cloud of neutral particles that slowly migrate towards the thruster. As this cloud is struck by fast ions from the thruster, some of the neutrals turn back into ions and are launched back at the thruster. Our beam catcher doesn't seem to be working. So upgrades are on the way as we work on turning our force field into a deflector shield that creates fewer new ions and deflects them away from the thruster rather than towards it. We hope to use advanced force fields to protect our thrusters and our facilities as we build next generation engines to carry humanity to the moon and beyond.